<laughs> hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome to the very first episode of Common Unity. I'm here with a very, very special guest, uh, the one, the only, Holy Gibbs. Hola. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for inviting me, man. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I know it's a busy, busy, busy week, so I'm glad <laughs> you took some time out. No, of course. Yeah, and it was funny. I mean, we ran into each other yesterday. No, yeah, uh, that was animals. that was a, a good surprise watching the Venezuela game. Yeah, on Tinto, no. Ah, amazing game. It made me very happy. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, yeah, it was unexpected, but it was amazing. I'm really happy we made it out, and oof, yeah, we'll have to see where we go. Yeah, we're gonna win the whole thing. Oh, watch 100%. out, Argentina. <laughs> watch out, watch out. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, one of the big reasons I wanted you to come on, especially as like a first guest, is because I feel like you are one of the people that in my journey here um, not only has helped me so much, but also kind of like encapsulates um, kind of like the Miami scene as a whole. Because you're not only um, a DJ and producer, you're also uh, a multi-instrumentalist, no? Yeah, yeah, that's how it started. <laughs> yeah. It started with the instruments and then the, the DJing. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So tell me that, how, how did that go about? Did you study uh, music or anything? Were you in a yeah, band? Yeah, um, I, I studied music. I, I mean, my, my family is, um, it's been like, music has been there the whole time. My, my grandfather was a musician. My mm -hmm. father is a musician. So I think, I, I mean, like, it was weird because I grew up surrounded by it, but I, I was never into like a music conservatory till like later. Mm -hmm. I started out more like watching how how my dad worked and just like grabbing different instruments and playing around with them and and I mean honestly props to my dad he has a nice good music taste so he showed me uh good music and and he had a lot of things to show so he 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 you know he didn't like just one thing you know he showed me everything like from rock to like electronic music when I was little um, so, I mean, that's how it started. Um, then I, I mean, I started with like piano and this and that, and then I grabbed the guitar and that was fun. I got excited. I was, I got the desire to start a band. So I did, I mean, the usual, I had a band with my two best friends when we were like uh, 14. And it was funny because like they didn't let us play you know, not in many places because we're, we're not old enough. Yeah. So we would have to like cheat and like, you know, hide and shit, but it, <laughs> it was fun. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, and then that started like evolving in different projects, different things. Um, I started doing electronic music also when I was like 17. It was more like, not I mean, not dance music. It was more like, uh, I don't know. Sounds, yeah. ambient shit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I love that as well. And and yeah, I mean, then what came after? Um, well, I moved to Miami, mm -hmm. met my bandmates, started the band, and and then the DJ. <laughs> yeah, so for those of you that don't know, the band he's referring to is High Alai, which is one of the best uh, recent new bands that I've heard. Coming out of here, you guys started around 2015, 16? Yeah, okay. yeah. We started around, I mean, I think the first release was 2015, mm -hmm. if not for 15, yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, we met, I mean, we started um, our singer, Oscar um, Sardinia. Um, he had this project in mind, and a friend of mine from home, from Venezuela, he did like a house party. Um, like a jam mm -hmm. party and I was just like jamming and Oscar jumped in mm -hmm. and I think like we didn't talk to each other like for the first like 30 minutes we just like played music yeah. and then after that we stopped and he was like hey do you want to you know be part of the project and I was like yeah of course <laughs> there you go yeah and he had a drummer and a bassist but as soon as I jumped in like two weeks after both of them left wow so he was like yes I guess we don't have a project <laughs> But then Ricky, the guy, Ricky Wuyon, um, the guy that did the house party, he, he's a drummer. So he's like, hey, we should invite Ricky. Yeah. And then I met Mario, uh, Mario Lemus, uh, amazing also musician, part of many bands here in, in Miami, Ladyboy, and many others. Mm -hmm. I saw him 
Where I met him at, he was busking at Wynwood. He was just like playing in a corner with his friends. Gotcha. I approached him and I was like, hey, you want to be part of a band? Yeah. You would be the bassist because he was playing guitar. You would be uh -huh. the bassist, but would you be down? He was like, yeah, of course. And that's how it started. Wow. Yeah. The and best part, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's been fun. Uh, they're like family. It's, you know, it's, it was interesting to like, I mean, I got to Miami, which I didn't know much about the scene or mm -hmm. the, what was happening. I mean, I, I remember like getting here, I went to, um, I mean, funny enough, when I got to Miami, it's when the, ba the band started, but also the interest in DJing. Uh, I remember I mm -hmm. one of the first bars that I ever went was The Corner, mm -hmm. and Mr. Terrence Tebow was playing. Mm -hmm. He was fucking amazing. I was of like, course. Wow. yeah. Of course, legend. <laughs> Miami legend. And I was like, yeah, uh, this, uh, I think I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like your first moment, at least for DJing, where you looked at it and you're like, oh, like, you know, like this is actually something I can do if you're interested. Yeah, I mean, I, I started, I mean, I, I've always uh, dj like I, I, I started when I was like 16, 17. I had a friend that got um, more into it when we were like younger, and it was more of a, like a drum and bass scene in, in Caracas, mm -hmm. in Venezuela. Because that's where you're from, right? Yeah, you, yeah. You grew up and lived there for the most part? Yeah, I was there till I was 19, and then yeah. is when I first uh, moved to United States. I lived in Missouri for a year. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> and then <laughs> I, I moved to Miami. <laughs> uh, but yeah, in Caracas, like you, honestly, when while I was growing up, there was a lot of shit happening. Um, so there wasn't much of a scene in mm -hmm. the sense of like you. We didn't have many like spaces to do either parties or like concerts. I mean, now nowadays, like all those bands that I saw while growing up, they you know they've done good and also because like, they they left you know caracas they yeah. either went to like mexico or yeah. you know, spain or whatever so mm -hmm. that gave them a platform but um back then there wasn't much honestly and it there wasn't much in the i would say like the i mean obviously you had your normal like house parties and stuff but like going to a club and listening to different kind of music wasn't a thing mm -hmm. So then, like, through my friend that he got interested in DJing and he started playing drum and bass. Yeah. So we ended up, like, going to drum and bass parties and, and this and that. And then we met, like, other crews of people that did, like, house mm -hmm. drum and bass party. And that's, yeah. like, where I eventually, like, I was like, okay, I'll jump in. Uh -huh. And I played a little. And I was like, okay, I like this. And I did it throughout the years, but n never as a, as a thing of, like, oh, I'm, I'm going to do this, you know. Mm -hmm. I just, like, I, I liked it. I... I love selecting music, I guess, and yeah. I was having fun with it. But then, like, well, obviously, coming to Miami, it's uh, I mean, it's it's a hub for parties, I guess, and, <laughs> <laughs> and DJing. And I, I I got exposed to um, really good DJs, uh, good clubs. Um, so I got more interested in it, like little by little. Yeah. Thanks to Miami. There you go. So how was like your breaking into like the Miami scene? What was that looking like? Um, with the band, it was um, it was. I mean, uh, this is a dumb word to use, I guess, but it was like very organic in okay. the sense that like, we just like found a bar in Brickle, like the least, yeah. you know, last place you would think of, uh -huh. and um, we got like an opportunity for like a first show. Okay. It was like five people. And we were actually, it was us and Maye. Uh, okay. She's also from Venezuela and she's doing amazing. She, and she's amazing. Amazing <laughs> singer, amazing everything. So it was like us two when we were both starting. Mm -hmm. And that was our first gig. And then I think like slowly we were like knocking on doors, like figuring out where were the, you know, the good spots for like rock music, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like probably like, Churchill's was our f yeah. the first place that we played, and it was like, oh, you know, this, there's a scene, there's rock, you, you know, we can do this. And after that, it just happened like very, um, like step by step. Like we played in different places, we got more people to follow, you know, the music, which is always important and very nice. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, not like, I don't want to talk badly about Miami but it was all, all, also difficult like we didn't have many spaces to play yeah. like there wasn't a lot of options mm -hmm. so it was difficult 
but that you know you you had Churchill's and then you had Las yeah. Rosas, which yeah, was yeah. amazing. Like it helped. Uh, Gramps as well. We played yeah. at Gramps, um, and I mean, there's at, at that time. I mean, still and even before us, but you had also really good bands. Um, you had Deaf Poets, they were great. Um, Jacuzzi Boys, yes, of course. Staple. Psychic Mirrors. Psychic Mirrors. Yeah, huge. Amazing. I mean, but even even talking about like the places that you played, like th talk about like those those two two of those three are now closed, right? Yeah. Which is really sad. I mean, mm. it sucks to see that like places like these like are such wonderful hubs and community centers yet. For one reason or another, you know, they just can't keep it up, and it's really sad to see. Um, but like nowadays, like in terms of finding places at gigs, I feel like it's even harder, no? Yeah, for, for sure. Bands. I mean, it, it's it's way harder. Um, there's no options. I mean, the the I would say the good thing about that is that now you have you can see like more of an attempt to do more like DIY shows yeah. or like um, warehouse show, which is fun and it's obviously sure. part of of a uh, music scene and a rock scene, but you don't have venues as you know as as a proper venue to have to go and see a band like any yeah. day of the week. You know, like I mean, I, uh, Gramps would be the last one yeah. standing now, and True. and Wingwood is weird, so I don't. Know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's not easy it's to true. get to go to Wingwood. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, even f like for us, like. We've been playing two thousand like eight years together, yeah. and so after we had that, we had churches, we had Las Rosas, and now we don't have uh, many options. It's like weird for us because we cannot play in our own city. Yeah, and we haven't like had many opportunities, honestly. Like, um, mm -hmm. well, I mean, thankfully, uh, three points happened, and yeah. they they brought uh, a lot of music to the city and Thanks. a platform for. Uh, for locals, which yeah. is amazing, and uh, but I mean, uh, apart from that, it's, it's hard. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, you know, like it's one festival that happens once a year, and they also have the three joints, which is where I, I joints, had yeah. the pleasure to see you guys there live, which is <laughs> yeah. wonderful. Um, I mean, you played, you DJed, and then you went and played, which is which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so I mean, stuff like that is really nice, but like I mean, consistently, you know, like these places have been closing, which kind of sucks. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like there there will be. A point where more places are gonna open up. I know that uh, Gramps even opened up their their side thing of Getaway, yeah. which I, I think I'm gonna go check out this weekend. I've yeah. been meaning to. Um, I've heard it's really nice. Um, so I feel like you know there's there's these places, especially for bands that hopefully will start popping up more because there used to be so much pre-pandemic. I feel like, um, but you know because of everything after that, um, they've kind of been closing down. But you yeah, know, I guess we'll have to see. I mean, like I, I feel like with every CD movement, like. When you have too much of one thing, then like yeah. this other thing is gonna, like or or lack of when you yeah. don't have venues for so long and all we have is like clubs or this and that. Like exactly. there's an urge to like or of people to like trying to make something happen and hopefully it does. Um, some places coming back even that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be really cool. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Um, and yeah, like I, I mean also it's Miami. It's a city that's been. Even like I mean, with pandemic, many places closed, but also a lot of people came to the city. Like it's a, it's a new crowd, new people. So it depends on what they choose to do. Like hopefully we get rock people to open venues True. in Miami. True. New people. Yeah. Yeah, because right now Grams is like the king of it all. But you yeah. know, because I feel like it's kind of been like the opposite of where now there's like a bunch of places, um, like you said, like clubs, bars, and stuff like that that are more into like having a DJ yeah. um, instead of live bands. But I do think that live, like there's nothing like live music and it'll definitely come back. Yeah, 100%, yeah. Um, right. But real quick, let's let's yeah. go back and let's go back in time a little bit and mm -hmm. kind of see more or less um, what brought you here. Um, I'm interested in hearing, cause I know you said that your dad was playing a lot of music when you were growing up. Yeah. So what's kind of like the first memory you have with music? Uh, I mean, classic, uh, the Beatles, like <laughs> of course. I, every time that I was, uh, they were driving me to like kindergarten. I was, mm -hmm. my, my dad is a huge Beatles fan and I was listening to the whole thing and I still do. I, I mean, I, I love the Beatles. They're amazing. It's a song that comes to mind. Um, uh, there's too many, but there's so many. <laughs> there's so it's many so many. Ones. Like the other day, I was doing a, a road trip with a friend, uh -huh. and we we're like, "Oh, let's just listen to the Beatles." And I think it was like two hours of like, "No, no, play that one." Play this <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, but um, there's one that I remember. Like I, 
um, obladi oblada. Oh, yeah, that was like for voice. me. I mean, obviously, it's 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 kind of childish and like. Yeah. So as a kid, I was like, oh, let me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a little uh, kids show. So that song stuck uh, stuck out when I was little. Mm-hmm. But um, but also, I mean, like I've all and definitely an influence. Not not it didn't come from my dad, but uh, I was. I, I like video games, and I remember playing uh, Zelda, uh, mm-hmm. Ocarina of Time, and that of was huge for me when it came to music. Like the, the music of the game is perfect; yeah, it's amazing. 100%. So that that was that's probably one of my oldest memories of like, oh, I want to do this somehow. Yeah. I also remember watching um, Amelie, the movie. Oh yeah, 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 yeah and that, that music is beautiful. Yeah. So like I mean that that also uh, brings me to like the fact that I I mean I, I love music I love everything I want to do everything but mm-hmm. it um, definitely a goal of mine is trying to make like music for like film video games that's mm-hmm. and that's something that I, I think that it, it comes more naturally to me than many other you know options but uh, mm-hmm. but yeah I mean I, I'm, I'm I, I am. It's a huge influence. Like all the all the video game music, the yeah. um, film music, and when it comes to rock, uh, oh my! My dad showed me Nine Inch Nails when I was younger, oh, wow. so that was for me yeah. huge. It's still a huge band for me. Mm-hmm. Um, Radiohead, probably my favorite band ever. Yeah, so. Of course, of course, amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I don't. I I think something that I, I because also I mean it was. Let me give props to the other people. It wasn't only my dad. Um, I mean, my dad had a broad catalog of music, but I had a, I have two older brothers as well, and okay. they they both listen to amazing music. Of course. Um, my brother was uh, super like reggae, like Rasta, like when he, he's way older than I am. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Sorry. So um, he's what eleven years older. So if I was I don't know five, he was sixteen, and oh yeah. I remember he had like the dreadlocks and like bleached <laughs> hair and the whole room was painted like with the Rasta flag and <laughs> every time I went in it was like purely uh, either reggae music or he loved like Rain Against the Machine, wow. uh, Limbiscuit, all that teen angst, 90s stuff, uh, which I also enjoyed and loved. Yeah. Um, I have my other brother, he's a little bit younger than the oldest, of course, mm-hmm. um, and he was more into like darker rock like more like you know like yeah. depressive <laughs> <laughs> going through it yeah, yeah he, he's more uh, emotional and passionate and so so he showed me like a, also like a darker side of rock like mm-hmm. more like I mean like Slipknot that yeah. was a huge band for me as well mm-hmm. growing up and that, and that came from my brother mm-hmm. um, so yeah I think that that the fact that I, I can I, I was able to like grab yeah. from different boxes um, is what today, like, I, I feel like I, I appreciate most of the music, I guess, like, I, and I, and I would love to, like, go into any kind of music, and yeah. I'll be open for it, you know? Yeah, I mean, I could definitely relate, because I have four older sisters, yeah. so I definitely relate, because, I mean, everybody's, like, their own person, and especially, like, me being the youngest, I feel like I definitely grabbed a lot from them, yeah. like, a lot of inspiration looking up, but also just, like, sonically, you know, like, there's definitely, some of my favorite artists is they are ones that I've gotten from them, you know? Um, but yeah, 100%, I, c- I can definitely relate. And what was like the first like um, concert that you like remember you went to? Mm, I mean, remember, um, uh, went to a Shakira concert with my mom. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, my mom also took me to concerts. Uh, she, yeah. I, went to, I went to Shakira, mm-hmm. I went to, um, I even saw Bastard Boys in Venezuela. Oh, wow. Yeah, my mom was, was into that pop. How was the concert scene like in Venezuela? Nah, terrible. I mean, when mm-hmm. when I was little, like you had, I guess like two big venues that they brought like big yeah. acts, but that ended when I was like fifteen, I think. That that's when yeah. it stopped and nobody else came. Yeah. Uh, but the concert that I mean, there were two concerts that I think the first concert that I chose mm-hmm. to go in Venezuela because yeah. we, we 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 only got what we you know yeah what they offer us, but it was my chemical romans. Oh, they wow. Were, yeah, that was super fun. Um, and they're very uh, theatrical, so like yes. the, the stage, the whole thing, was, it was amazing. And then a festival, like a year or two after, they brought uh, Korn. 
Oh wow! And that, that was, I think that was like my first because that's gonna be sick. That might that might have been the first one that I went with like my two best friends and like our moms didn't know exactly what was happening. It's like yeah, <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a it's a it's easy. It's yeah, gonna be yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. And it was like rough. Oh yeah. Like you had the um, the um, the VIP section and okay. like general admission. Of course. And you had a barricade, I guess. And it was a festival, so there were like four or five bands. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. And when Corn started playing, everyone just like we were in general, and everyone just jumped the barricade, <laughs> and they were like, "Fuck VIP!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just of course. Like, and they were starting like running. We we're like, "Okay, I guess we have to run." And we were <laughs> running, and we were running to the front. And it was, it was, I mean, like it was a big, big venue. Um, and I remember, like, I mean, the the bassist came out, and he just like. Mm-hmm. Played a string and the whole floor <laughs> started vibrating and then the super low tuned uh, uh-huh. bass. So that was amazing. Yeah, we were we were we were having so much fun. Yeah. It, it was that. So I think th- those are like the. I mean, it's funny because it's it's random concerts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I guess that's how it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I get that. Yeah. And what do you feel like? How was like the the Caracas scene, um, the local scene, and stuff like that? Were you there? I mean, there there was so. Um, uh, Okay, it's 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 weird. It's uh it's so like I, I till today I, I talk with my friends mm-hmm. weekly about like what's the the scene in Caracas like how does it how did it work how does it work now what's happening um, like I said we, there wasn't many options of like venues to play at um, mm-hmm. I think that most of the bands that I that I knew and heard back then, and now that they're doing good, but it was more of a, um, how do you, I, I didn't know how to say it in English, but it's like a school fair, I guess. Okay. Like they, yeah. like the, the private schools in Caracas did like, uh-huh. uh, I don't know, like a Christmas party or a yeah. whatever event, and they brought, so they had like their own students play at their events, you know? So yeah. if, you know, if you have this school and these kids have a band, okay, so let's put them and let them play. So that that's how bands in Caracas, in my uh, era, like before mm-hmm. there were many great bands, but uh, in my era, while I was growing up, that was the main platform, sadly. I mean, like not sadly, it was fun. It was yeah. what we had and yeah. we all did the best uh, with, with that. But um, it wasn't venues, it wasn't um, people going to like, I mean, because like, you, you just couldn't like uh, as a 14, 15 year old, um, telling your mom that oh I'm gonna go to this area of of the city and yeah. this bar for a rock concert or whatever and yeah. there was like, no no yeah. way you know so this was like the safe environment in which you could have like you could see a band yeah and and yeah that that was mainly how they started um, and also I mean all these bands that I'm talking about they're like I would I would say like a couple years older than I was yeah. so. After a while, they all tried their luck in you know different places. They either went, yeah, probably Mexico, mo- most of them, um, and and then they got bigger and better, and they had a platform, and mm-hmm. and it's it's something that I experienced recently is that it the the you know the romantic part of it is that now that Caracas is a little bit better yeah. than it was before. Now all these bands are coming back and yeah. playing Caracas, and people are like reconnecting to uh, the bands that they saw when they were like growing up. Yeah. And now you have bigger festivals, you have you know better opportunities. Mm-hmm. Artists are are going back to their home and getting paid well and having a yeah. good crowd and good organization. So it's, it's yeah, I, like two years ago I think. Um, there was this festival in 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 Caracas in during December and even like the Vendra Van Hart went to yeah. play um, Arca went there recently yeah, so it's that. it's and it's people that you know they they are either Venezuelan or have a connection to Venezuela or whatever and they're going back and and every like I for the, I would say for the first time ever I actually saw like a festival or a crowd with people yeah. and actually enjoying music and feeling safe mm-hmm. while enjoying music and it was it was super pretty to watch honestly it was it was a good feeling <laughs> yeah no i mean it's been really nice to see how like people artists like not only bands but even like uh djs and, and stuff like that like everybody is actually going to to venezuela which is something that like, not even like 
two three years ago it was like very common but yeah but like I, I feel like as of late it's it's been a lot more welcomed and I, uh, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, we had, they had boiler room with with Arca and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. That's I would have never in my life expected like a Ever. Caracas boiler room. <laughs> I know, but I um, know it's nice that, to see that like the scene and and also like the safety is just getting a lot better and yeah. and it shows a lot uh, for the city and country as a whole. Um, but it is nice to see that at least it's getting a little bit better. No, hundred percent. And and uh, you know that I, I've met people that are younger uh, and. The fact that they are getting to experience this, something that we maybe couldn't, is yeah. it's you know it's amazing because, as as with everything, if you have a platform and you have and you're like injecting culture and music to like younger generations, yeah, they're gonna have a bigger desire of oh I actually want to be an artist and be a musician and have a band and so I think, I mean and obviously like with the situation in Minnesota it happens with everything like even now with the. Uh, football team that we were talking about like, yeah. for a while there was no platform like even if you were a great player you had nowhere to play there wasn't a proper league there wasn't proper mm -hmm. uh, facilities or anything yeah. so now that things are getting better you're seeing how like you know there's a young generation of players that are like motivated and they want to mm -hmm. play and now and so i mean it's 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 needed it's much needed i mean for the for the future culture of Venezuela. Agreed. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm I'm happy. Hopefully, it, it, yeah. <laughs> it's a very thin line in, in like it's getting better and it all might go to shit yeah, again. Yeah, it's but, true. Uh, but hopefully, stays good for a while. Agreed. Yeah. But going back to the whole um, to where you're talking about the soccer facilities and all that, I know that you experienced this firsthand, correct? Yeah. Because you were you were a soccer player over there. Yeah. Um, and that kind of brought you here to uh, the U.S., right? So yeah. Kind of tell me more or less more about that. Yeah, I mean, it was so it. The, and the, the, in general, like I, I remember, like I also started. I was doing karate, mm -hmm. and when I was like younger, and I was doing good. And then it got to a point that like my parents had to drive me to like dangerous roads and dangerous places and cities yeah. to like go to these tournaments and and you know things weren't organized. It was all bad. So my parents were like, "No, you know what? You know, you're not gonna continue doing this. Like no. it's it's too tough." Yeah. And same with with football. I mean. Um, honestly, the, like, I wasn't the best, but, uh, I saw kids, uh, that play with me that were amazing mm -hmm. and none of them were giving a, a proper shot. I mean, if, if they, if they had an opportunity because like their parents did whatever possible to like either take them out of, of the country and like yeah. do some trials in I don't know, Spain or whatever, yeah. but still like. Because also it's it's when uh, when the situation is like that it's not I mean both are bad the inside and the outside yeah. of the country so also scouts are not looking into Venezuela exactly. because it's like what you know we we don't even know what's happening in there yeah you know? um, and I mean when when I came here for uh, to play it was more of a, I mean that's how I ended up in Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> It was more of a opportunity. It was like a little bit random, came out of nowhere. But I was like, you know what? I'll take it because at that moment, my dad lived in Miami. Okay. He he was he's, he uh, moved here like 2007. No, no, 2000 what? 10 or yeah. 2009 when I was like 16. Okay. So I visited him often, but. I mean, no offense to the city, but I wasn't like, I mean, I, I know what Miami is, so I want to try something else. Yeah, know? exactly. And that's how I ended up in Missouri <laughs> and and playing, and, and it was like a complete different level, facilities, everything was crazy. Like, yeah. Nothing that I, you could have ever seen, you know, in Venezuela. Really? Yeah. And nowhere, nowhere. Um, so that was, that was, it was really fun. Then okay. I got injured and that was it. <laughs> but... But I mean, you know, everything happens for a reason. That's why I ended up in Miami. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but even then, so you were going for a school, no? So you're yeah. in a school. What school is this? Lindenwood University. Okay, nice. It's, a, it's in a little town called St. Charles. It's like 30 minutes away from St. Louis. Yeah, and how was your time there? It was, ugh, it was interesting. I uh, met amazing people. Uh -huh. I mean, actually, the one of the... One of the people that opened up Tripping Animals. Okay. He was yeah, my yeah. friend. I met him at college. No way. Yeah. yeah. Wow. He's, he's from Venezuela as well, but not from Caracas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from Acarigua. And um, 
So I, I met amazing friends, like even, uh, I think it was last year, one of them got married and I got to play at their wedding. Oh, nice. So that was super nice. Um, and it was, it was my first experience in, in what I would say is like the United States. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, before I visited, I don't know, I mean, obviously Miami, New York, mm -hmm. LA, uh, and here and there, like, yeah. but this is like, okay, this is the heart of United States. Uh, so it was, it was interesting, um, pros and cons. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I, it wasn't for me, honestly. Yeah, fair. <laughs> it wasn't for me. That's why, like, for that and yeah. for the injury, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm so out. But, so uh, you, you went straight to Miami or did you go back home? Straight to Miami, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, I, I, was, I was going through, like, a, uh, like a rough time, I guess. I, I, I broke my hamstring. I was, like, walking in crouches in the middle of the Missouri winter. Oof. Yeah, I was. Uh, and so what, what the situation was... Back then, it's like, I mean, I didn't have a full scholarship, so you have mm -hmm. to, you know, obviously yeah. pay some. And so my parents were, like, paying, like, the government gives you, like, an exchange rate okay. for students abroad, yeah. like the Venezuelan government. Yeah. But uh, every time, like, time passed by and that was getting more difficult to get or even more expensive. Mm -hmm. So a mix of that and, like, my, my dad living in Miami told me, like, just come here, live yeah. with me, and, you know, you'll... Uh, enroll in the community college and you're a uh, you know, Florida resident, whatever, it's just yeah. gonna be cheaper. Um, so that's why, and also, I mean, many, many friends of mine came f from Caracas to Miami. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I guess I have friends, my dad's there, it's gonna be cheaper, it's gonna be more accessible. So that's why that was the, the reason I, I came here. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So then you've been here ever since? Yeah, um, 2019, I moved to Mexico City for a okay. year. I was uh, trying to find a new experience. Uh, I mean, I've, yeah, by that time, I've been, I was in Miami for like six years. Okay. Um, Mexico City is an amazing. Yeah, beautiful. It's crazy how, how amazing it is. It's beautiful. It is. It's filled with music, culture, uh, opportunities. So I was like, you know what? I've, I've always wanted to give it a try. Mm-hmm. And I just sold everything here in Miami, everything, wow. my car, all my furniture, my everything. Yeah. And I was like, I'm out. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. And it was amazing. I mean, I, so I went there, um, I was playing uh, uh, with this project. It's like a Venezuelan singer. His name is Simon Grossman. And I was playing uh, bass with him. Okay. For the band. Uh, and he was moving to Mexico as well. And I was like, okay, I guess I, you know, I can find some music gigs and probably I can, by that time I was already starting to DJ mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, so I guess I, I'll ha I can find some, you know, opportunities in there and it didn't happen. It was, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was so broke while I was living in Mexico. It was, it was bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, but obviously it's, um, it's a city that it's, it was still accessible and yeah. I, I had the best time of my life while I was living there. Like the, mm -hmm the places that you can go to like dance and party and yeah. listen to jazz and rock and the museums, like everything. So it was like, I was broke, but I was happy. I was extremely yeah. happy. And so, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a, a strong experience. Um, and then, I, I mean, I, apart from that, I was starting to like build something as like, okay, I guess like, you know, first year always tough. I can, you know, I can build on this and keep going. And um, and then COVID happened. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. So I was kind of forced to like leave Mexico. Okay. And even like expecting that it was gonna be I don't know like one month or two months, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. And well, we know that it wasn't. Yeah. One or two months. It was like longer than that. Yeah. So I came back to Miami. I just like stayed here, not knowing what what I was gonna because at that time I was. Literally, I mean, two days before it all went yeah. crazy, I was about to like embark on a tour with this guy, Simon Grossman. Uh -huh. we we're going to do some cities in South America. Then with Hayalai, we were about to get like an opportunity to uh, go on tour with this other band, Chicano nice. Batman, which is amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was like, I was like planning out the year, yeah. and, and then it was like, nope, no yeah. music, no live anything, no nothing. So I came back here and I was a little bit like lost. I was mm -hmm. like, what, what, what do I do now? 
Um, and that's how, weirdly, that's how actually the DJing thing starting to like work more than before. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Miami wasn't a city that closed down no. as others did. It's true. Um, and we had like secret parties and yeah. you know things were happening like you know we, they weren't allowed to go to like 2 a.m. but they were like, allowed to go from like 6 to 12. Yeah. And I started getting like more opportunities to play around and and that's how it, it just like basically started like I, I mean like I like I said I did it before but that's when mm-hmm. I, I think that it it started. Yeah. Properly. So thank you and not thank you COVID. <laughs> yeah literally. <laughs> uh, what were some of the first places that you remember playing? Um, like post COVID, um, uh, Melinda's ATV. Yes. That was yes. probably the one that gave me um, uh, the most opportunities at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, Which was a huge place. Yeah, ATV was was huge in its time. No, no, it, it was amazing. I love that place. I was I was so happy to have it. I mean, it was. Um, I had really good friends that you know run the place, and I met amazing people. It was honestly uh, like. Um, like an escape from like what was happening, you know, the whole COVID thing. Yeah, uh, I was there all the fucking time, and <laughs> I mean, I started mainly like playing in the like in the Melinda's area, like the restaurant. Okay. So like yeah. people were like there, and yeah. I was just like you know playing like you know music for the people, I guess for like, yeah, but not, yeah, not, yeah. not dancing or anything. Just like yeah. Yeah. then after that, I got like an opportunity to go, you know, in the back ATV. Mm-hmm. Also, one of the first places that I played was the corner. Yes. Which, I mean, that's why I, I love the corner to death. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll defend it till I die. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best place in Miami. Um, <laughs> and I still play there. Like, I've, I think I started, and ever since I started, I haven't, I play there once a month forever, yeah. and I will forever. Yeah, you play, I, I feel like you, you're, you're one of the people that play, uh, like, you play everywhere, but there's a lot of places that you play at very consistently. Yeah. Um, the corner being one. Yeah, 100%. And also one of the newer places here in Miami, um, which would be Medium Cool. Yeah. Right? So how did that come about? Um, so part of the, the, the people running um, ATV uh, transitioned to uh, opening Medium Cool, mm-hmm. and... I mean, I had no idea about the project or the plans or anything. Um, just like one day, my friend came to me and he was like, "Hey, we're opening this spot in like two weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't know what it's gonna be. We don't know how it's gonna go. <laughs> yeah. But if you want, like, you know, to try it out, and if you know, if it's if it's the vibe, you, uh, you know, I would like you to like stay there as a as a um, like a resident. Resident, mm-hmm. yes. I, that word left my head. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Um, so I was like, yeah, of course. And I remember, like, at, at the beginning, there were, like, five people at night. And, but slowly, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's another place that I well, obviously have uh, a lot of love for that spot. Like, the, mm-hmm. everything has been super uh, healthy, how it grew, like, how people just, like, started coming. Yeah. And the place is pretty. The music was, like, I mean, apart from me, like, everyone that played there is... You know they they they're creating something a vibe there so yeah so I think that nowadays it's like it's an amazing spot and yeah and yeah I've been super happy it's been a year a so, year yeah and it's grown so much yeah it's huge yeah I yeah, mean yeah. you guys even took it to Europe no yeah we did um a, a pop up in New York first and then London and I think that the idea for them is to like try to like you know do this yeah. Uh, more often because like it's it's what I like about the 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 club is is it's a mix of things. It's not like only like oh you go there to like see a DJ. It's yeah. the cocktails are really good. The um, the head bartender, I guess how you, <laughs> that's how you call it. I don't know, but yeah. he it's amazing. The staff is amazing. The the door is amazing. Yeah. The owners are are always there and they're always having fun and they're inviting their yeah. people. Every other resident. Um, I mean it's. Again, cliche, but it, it's a it's a family. It's really nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, and it's in like the most unexpected location too. In yeah. A, in the basement of a hotel in, <laughs> in Miami, Miami Beach. Beach. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's funny because when it started, I I told my friends like, hey, you know, this is actually like getting to be good, so you should yeah. come. And they were like, nah, we're not going <laughs> to the beach. <laughs> no amazing. way. Oh my god. And like, funny enough, like you, they went there once, and they just like, 
now they want to go all the time. Like it's, yeah. it's a, it has, it has some magic in that spot. It's, it it's really, yeah, it's really cool. It 100% does, and I'm, I'm happy that there's places like that that are opening up. And it's nice because Miami is, it's cliche, but it is such a huge city, uh, not just in terms of people and influences, but also like geographically. Yeah. Um, and like, yeah, like getting to Miami Beach is a pain, but when you go and you make somewhere like like Miami, uh, like what am I saying? Sorry, like medium cool. Yeah. Like where it's like it's worth going. Um, you know, it even it even spawns the possibility of opening other places. You yeah. know, um, I know that Eagle Room was there before, but Broken Shaker, I think, um, is yeah, it's going gone sold. Yeah. Yeah. So so places like that may you know there may be new places like that, but hopefully, yeah. I mean, the, I've always said like, obviously not being from Miami and not fully understanding how everything developed, but like I've always thought that like Miami, Miami Beach has so much potential to be an amazing thing. You know, one hundred percent. You have the beach right there. You have, it's it's beautiful. You have the Art Deco, um, you know, uh, architecture. It's 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 very special. And I know that it was like, I mean, like many places died, and there yeah. wasn't many options to do on the beach. Then you had like, I don't know, like random crowds of people. So you yeah. now you're like, ah, I don't, I want to avoid it. I, but but I feel like, hopefully it works, and hopefully they they keep opening new places and. And it, it becomes like something great, yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's nice that at least we have that one wonderful thing. Yeah. Because I mean, you know, once there's one, I feel like it it opens a possibility for just yeah, for just of course, more, you know. And also, I mean, something that I I've I feel like I, I've experienced in other cities that I like. I mean, it's different because in other cities you have public transportation or you can yeah. either walk, but like. I mean, sometimes I'm in downtown. And it's like, oh yeah, no, because I'm, right now I'm going to play a medium cool. It's like, oh, but it's so far. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's like 50 minutes, and you're in a car. That's like, true. <laughs> it's yeah, good. It's, come on. Like usually, you have you, like people, you have to like take a subway in 45 minutes, and and people just do it. Like if it's a good spot, they just go and 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 it's a it's a good sacrifice. And here it's like, no, no way. Yeah, literally. <laughs> the bridge, I won't cross the bridge. Yeah, oh my God, the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> and with this traffic, yeah, I mean, I get it, but geez. Yeah. Um, but, you, I mean, you just mentioned right now that you've been um, to many other cities that have uh, public transportation and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I feel like you're a very well-traveled uh, person. You've gone around a little bit. Um, what are kind of, like, these, like, experiences and stuff that you kind of take um, from these different locations that you visited? Um, I mean, it's... it's I'm going to go, like to the end of the answer before I go back, but like, yeah. and something that I think that, you know, most of people will find out by themselves eventually, but like the grass is always greener on the other side. Like, True. I think that I, I, I try to see it more as of, uh, I mean, well, maybe like, I mean, for us, I mean, our whatever era of your life you're living, but mm -hmm. for us that we're young, like yeah. it's a matter of, each city has something very unique to offer, and ideally, uh, we all get to experience that either for like a short period of time, like yeah. live somewhere for six months or try something for two years, and then two years another place. Like, I mean, it happened to me when I when I first moved to Miami. I I had a an idea of Miami, and and I was getting tired of Miami, mm -hmm. honestly. And that's when I went to Mexico City, and I loved Mexico City. It was amazing. <laughs> then COVID happened. I came back. And actually, that was like my second Miami revival. I was like, you know what? I actually like Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I, I missed it. I, 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 yeah. I, there's things that, that I was like, oh, you know what? I, I have love for Miami. I mean, so the thing for me, it's like I, I, I the world right now, it's, it's, everything is so connected, international. It's open. So for me, it would be a matter of more like trying different places, trying stuff out for like a period of time and then eventually I, I guess that you can like think, oh, this is the, the option that fits, you know, best for what I want in life. Yeah. Um but yeah, it's 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 hard to like and also how the how fast paced everything is nowadays with all, you know, the craziness, the information, the politics, the wars, the everything. Like mm -hmm. uh, because I, I, I sometimes have this crisis in which like like I mean, I don't want to get into politics, but like obviously, <laughs> United States can get weird sometimes, yeah, and you know, especially with politics. Yeah. <laughs> but then I'm like, okay, but where would I go? Yeah. Like, if I go to anywhere else, I mean, if I I cannot back, go back home because it's obviously yeah. not fixed. If I go to this place, maybe in ten years there's gonna be a war in this. So, yeah. Like you never know what's the 
you know, I, I, I wouldn't think there's like one place that's like stable and it's like, oh, this is a place that I would move to. Um, True. But yeah, I mean, that, that, that's the thing. Like I, I'm, I'm a person that when I've traveled, I, I really appreciate the walking, the public transportation, the, I mean, seeing museums, parks or whatever. But then like you're here and it's like, oh, you know, you have the beach and sometimes you just want to be in your fucking car and not deal with people. So, 100%. so it, I, it's a matter of like, for me, it's like wherever, now that everything, again, it's so open and so connected. Like if you're too long in one place, as we are like, since we're young, like you're just gonna get tired and annoyed by it. So you mm-hmm. just like go out and try something else, and then probably come back or just yeah. stay if you loved it. I don't know. That's true, 100. Yeah. Um, percent Okay, so we've we've touched upon a little bit of um, going back to some of your influences and stuff, and I have uh, I wanted to know more or less like off the top of the head, what are like your five most influential personally? They don't need to be the best, okay. but five most influential albums. Albums. Um, okay. Huh. They don't need to be in order. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. that's already hard enough. <laughs> and I think I, I should have this answer, but I, but I, but I was like, I'm like, huh. um, because, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. no, I was just gonna say, cause you have a very broad, like, yeah, like, and it's know, a mix. It's definitely a mix. Exactly. I'm, I, I think that in rainbows by Radiohead is yes, 100%. there. Yeah. It's not the one, I mean, no order, but if it's, yes. if there's a one, <laughs> I would yeah. say Probably in Raymond, and again, like as my favorite band, um, the whole thing, uh, the whole disco, like Radiohead discography is amazing. Yeah. Um, Drugs by Affix Twin is yes, yes. is one of my favorite as well, as well as Selected Ambient Sounds. But like, of course, yeah, those two are huge for me. Um, what else? Huh. This is- I mean, yeah, it's it's hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's, no, it's very hard. hard but I like question. I like the question because, I mean, usually you, you like usually it's the bands, but yeah. the albums that's 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 even better. I know, right? <laughs> album like it's. I'm it's such a thing. like album head. Like I, yeah. I love listening to albums fully through, and because I feel like you know, especially for bands, like different albums tell different parts of of the time. Um, you know, like uh, like you said with, with uh, Junks and um, and Saw One and yeah. Two. You know, like these are just different parts of of his of of Apex Twins life, you know, yeah. which is also a life that nobody really knows about, but, <laughs> yeah. but you know, you got, you kind of still get like a little peek into like these people's minds and yeah. what's going on with them during that time, you know? No, I, I mean, that's, uh, again with the Radiohead, uh, obsession, but that's why Radiohead for me is, is my favorite. It's like you, I mean, they, they take, uh, I would say like five, seven years to make an album. And once they bring it out, it's like you, you understand why they took so long and yeah. what's happening in their sure. career, in their process, in their like evolution, and I mean, every every album has been a masterpiece. Honestly. And you also went to go see Tom York's uh, sideband, no? Yeah, the smile. Yeah, yeah the smile. <laughs> it was amazing, and yeah, everything they've done, it's I would say it's perfect. I mean, this is a very hot take. I'm just gonna throw it, um, <laughs> but I would say for me, Radiohead it might be better than the Beatles. I don't wow, know. <laughs> wow, it's a super hot take. I know. And, <laughs> Most of the people are not going to agree with me, and I'm not saying it's 100% true, but I do feel like, also, I mean, the Beatles, revolutionary, amazing, yeah. but um, it was different times, and the fact that Radiohead is doing what they're doing in this time yeah. of life is impressive, and they've been able to like stay in top of the game always, and yeah. even get better which, with each album, and evolve, and... And it's a career that's been going on for like 30 years. More or less, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's I think it's, 90s, yeah. Man. So that's crazy. I mean, yeah, no. Top no, hate, no hate with the Beatles, but Beatles, Beatles were like six, eight years, I think. That yeah, no, <laughs> no, it's true, it's true. It's different, but 100%. Yeah, so I like. Mean, yeah, 100%, I get it. Yeah, I see it. yeah. Don't hate me. <laughs> no, no, no hate, please. I feel that. Yeah. And what was like your favorite uh, concert that you've seen? Right here. Yeah? You saw right. them? What? Yeah, yeah, I hear. Um... Uh, when when they were uh, with um, Amun Shepu, so their last tour, oh. it was 2017. Yeah. They played at the uh, well, American Airlines. I don't know what the name is yeah, right now. God, They've changed it every two months. But yeah, um, really. it was there, and it was just amazing. I mean, I, I cried so much, and I cried with, like, random people that had, right? Oh, because yeah. I, I went it's there by myself, and I, I remember, like, I, I got there, and there was this, like, huge dude, like, right next to me, and he's like, okay. <laughs> 
and then in the middle of the concert we just looked at each other we were both crying like, <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was that was beautiful um also i mean it's i love this band probably one of my top 10 favorite bands but um okay. Which also, it's one of my favorite records now. Okay. Songs for the Dead by Queens of the Stone Age. Ah, yes. I would say the best rock album in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I've seen them live three times and they're always like so good. They're perfect. They're impeccable. Yeah. Like, and it's, I mean, it, it's rock, like pure rock that I think that, you know, sometimes we were missing with music in general night, right now. And it's something that I grew up with like strongly. I, I so... Yeah, I, I would say that those, and again, one of my favorite bands, Nine Inch Nails, yes. was mind-blowing to the point that it got too intense. That I was like, I don't know if I can watch this any longer. <laughs> <laughs> the visuals, the whole thing, it was yeah. impressive what they do, and it was a lot, but it was, it was I mean, that's, go all out. that's what they are, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, one of the things that I do love about, um, like, what I've seen you do is uh, I know that you and some friends have recently started... Um, a party at Miami Soundbar called Navaja. Yeah. And it's, it's unique because, like, you know, you don't really see DJs playing the type of music that you guys play there. So can you kind of talk more or less about that? Yeah. Um, it was a party that I started with um, uh, Christian from Soundbar. I mean, well, Christian, Tiang, his mm -hmm. DJ name. And Brian, which uh, he goes by Bad Juju. He's, uh, he's over under. Tam Tam, amazing guy. Yeah. He hates me, but I love him. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. Like we, like I, I've always, um, in general, always loved the idea of like a off night, like a random thing. Like you go out on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and you yeah. go out to a city, and you find this like random bar that's playing purely emo music or whatever. It's like, yeah, oh yeah. shit, I dig this. Like maybe it's not something that you choose on a Saturday or a Friday, but yeah. if it's a Tuesday it might be the best night ever. And you're going to exactly. meet really interesting people. Uh, and also, yeah, that was also what you mentioned, like the fact that we we probably don't have like many parties or DJs playing that kind of music, which yeah. is, I mean, for me, super fun. And so what what we, we started with was kind of like, we picked like a era... In time, I, I would I would say like between like 2000, 2015, that like um, alternative indie yeah. sleaze movement that was extremely fun, <laughs> and it's funny because um, I mean me and and Christian are a little bit younger, Brian is a little bit older, so like we mm -hmm. we cover we cover the whole spectrum of That's what true. that era was. So he actually lived like the sleaze parties yeah. and all that yeah stuff that happened in, in Miami. There was a big like sleaze movement and. Yeah. Um, and justice and all that and then like i would say christian and i grew up with more of that indie sound of i don't know uh, the strokes or the yeah. arctic monkeys when they were good mm -hmm. no they <laughs> shit <laughs> uh, um, yeah. yeah so so it's and also like i it, it it's um the core of it is like three friends having fun and yeah. playing music that it's fun for them like because sometimes like the the DJ thing is, gets like too serious, and yeah, like, oh, you have to curate, or, or yeah, the yeah. club is gonna like you or not. The crowd, we really just, we just want to get drunk on a Tuesday and play like, yeah, silly stuff. <laughs> you can tell. I mean, you, you know, I got into a few, and it's every time it is, it's the same thing. It's just like friends having fun, and it's infectious. <laughs> yeah. You go on, people there are just like hanging out, like even people that have never met each other before. It's like everybody just bonds over the the what's going on in front of them, you know? <laughs> yeah, we have one. Um, this Tuesday, and it was one of the best. It was amazing. Uh, sadly, the last one for the summer, but we'll mm -hmm. be back. But, um, yeah, it's like, like I said, like on a Tuesday, you see, like, random people out. and the, But then you see, like, a friend of yours with a group yeah. of people on a Tuesday. It's like, oh, shit, that's amazing. And then they all started dancing. Yeah. And it, it, it's I, I love that party. I love my friends and everything. It's super good. Yeah, I'm really glad you guys were able to create <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Well, I think, um, I think... That's all we got for now. Yeah. Um, but where can the people find you? Um, the the social medias. Um, Instagram is Hovi Gibbs, J O V I G I B S. Um, with music and platforms, uh, Spotify. It's coming really soon. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, also, I have a side project. It's called uh, Kind Sugi. Uh, 
there's some out there in Spotify, more like ambient nice. sound. Um, so yeah, that's there you go. that's it. And in during the night in the week in Miami, yes, we, yes, there's yeah in the streets. There you go, <laughs> roaming the streets. <laughs> roaming the streets for sure. All right, well, thank you again for for coming on. Thank you, Lucito, for yeah, having me. Of it's course, a absolute pleasure. And I love this radio. I love when there's like new proposals, like what you're doing right now. So. Thank you. Support the radio, support Luis, watch the show, and thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> thank you for coming. Thank you. All right, let's go to the DJ set then. Oh, yeah, now we're playing. Woo. Yay. Let's go. <laughs>